Hey friends, this is Maria at Simply Well. Today I wanted to share with you what I've been doing for creating my own electrolyte powder. But before I do that, let me just show off my belly, okay? Woohoo! Ten and a half weeks. That's a pretty big belly for a little baby that's like a little over an inch long. Um, feeling pretty good, just a little bit congested today. My son's been picking up all kinds of cooties from his daycare. Anyway, um, you know, since I was kind of slacking on the protocol for like a week and then the weather changed and got really overcast. And so, of course, my blood pressure went lower um, with the, the changes in the pressure in the air. I've been feeling slightly headachy and um, I was slacking on all the juicing. And it's just I constantly have to bring home to myself like the importance of me actually following through on this protocol that does indeed work. Um, but, you know, I've been doing this for 10 months, so... There are definitely some weeks where I'm more on point than others, but luckily, you know, when I'm not feeling great, I know exactly why and exactly what to do about it. So today, um, what I wanted to share with you is just what I'm doing to create my own um, electrolyte drink. I haven't actually tested this out yet, but I did make it last night and I just wanted to share the recipe with you, along with some other information about um, the values of potassium and sodium in different vegetables that we can juice. So, um, you know, if you've been on the forum, the Simply Well Migraine Relief Facebook group, um, you'll know that we've had quite a bit of discussion about Angela Stanton's um, insights into how to raise low blood pressure to get more blood to the brain through the use of optimal electrolyte balance. And, um, you know, more sodium in the diet will um, raise the blood pressure and constrict the blood vessels, which will bring more blood to the brain. Um, but we, it's not enough just to eat more salt. There, it needs to be in the optimal ratio of um, 2 to 1 potassium to sodium. I had bought these salt sticks on the recommendation of Gita, and for some reason when I bought them, I must have just been in a rush because I see that the sodium to potassium ratio is, is it's like twice as much sodium as potassium, actually four times as much sodium as potassium. There's 250 milligrams of sodium in here and 63 milligrams of potassium. So that's not really optimal. I mean, you know, when people exercise, which is presumably the group of people that use these salt sticks the most, they sweat out more salt. And so people who are doing high intensity exercise need a lot more sodium. Um, but for the purposes of migraine relief and keeping our electrolyte balances optimal, we would want the opposite of this. So taking the salt sticks alone would not be beneficial. And I've only taken one of these with some carrot juice. And now that I'm looking a little more closely at it, I have this book, uh, The Transformational Power of Fasting by Stephen Herod Buner, which is an excellent book. And in it, he gives some values for potassium and sodium for various vegetables and fruits, or rather mostly vegetables. Um, so the carrot juice, which is part of my protocol, the Simply Well protocol, um, he says that five medium carrots contain somewhere in the range of 125 milligrams of calcium, 1,250 milligrams of potassium, 40 milligrams of magnesium, 125 milligrams of phosphorus, and 170 of sodium. There's also 40,000 IU of vitamin A and 30 milligrams of vitamin C. A little bit of iron and a little folic acid and trace amounts of B6 and niacin. So 1,250 milligrams of potassium compared to 170 milligrams of sodium. If we wanted to make that ratio be more balanced with the potassium to sodium, we would need 625 milligrams of sodium to balance out the amount of potassium that we're getting. And of course, this isn't going to be an exact science, but if there's already 170 milligrams of sodium in, that, in those carrots, then that would make, let's see, two... 430 or 440 um, milligrams of sodium that we need in addition to the sodium that's already in there. So instead of taking one of these, if there's 250, 215 milligrams of sodium in here, I would want to take two of these um, salt sticks along with my uh, carrot juice or whatever the equivalent amount of table salt is um, just on my hand. But since I have these salt sticks, and the salt sticks also, they have vitamin D3 in them, which is kind of weird. I mean, I guess it's kind of dark and overcast now, so that doesn't bother me that much. But it's like, I don't know, I don't think of D3 as an electrolyte. I'm kind of surprised it's in here. But in any case, for my purposes, I'm going to take two of these whenever I juice my carrot juice. Um, and I, uh, I know Gita is really into celery. And celery is one of the vegetables that's higher in sodium than other vegetables. 
So it says here, two stalks of celery contain approximately 275 milligrams of potassium, 30 milligrams of magnesium, 35 of calcium, 20 of phosphorus, and 90 of sodium, along with other things. Um, so that's about three times more potassium than sodium. So the ratio of sodium to potassium with the celery is definitely better, but you would still want like an additional 30 to 40 milligrams of sodium to actually make it exactly balanced, which, you know, this is more than 30 to 40, but, you know, not that we have to get super exact about this, but you can just put a, a few grains of salt on your hand and lick that off um, along with, before you drink the celery juice or just sprinkle a very small amount into the celery juice. Um, he goes through, let's see, beets. Beets are 250 milligrams of potassium. This is in one medium-sized beet and 50 milligrams of sodium. So that's um, five times more potassium than sodium in a beet. Anyway, um, I, I think for my purposes, um, just sticking with the carrot juicing, um, you know, you could obviously e easily look up the values for how much potassium is in kale or whatever your other favorite um, vegetables are and adjust accordingly. But um, for my purposes, I'm just recognizing that not only is the powdered resistant starch really good to have on hand for those weeks when I just absolutely am very busy and I don't have the time to juice, um, but also having some electrolyte um, mixture um, in already measured out in the optimal balance can, I'm imagining, uh, be very beneficial to have on hand for the really, really busy weeks where if I'm slacking off and I'm starting to feel a little bit of symptoms, I can simply, and I can easily travel with this, um, and just mix it in with some juice or something. There's no doubt whatsoever that the juicing of the vegetables is optimal on so many levels and so much better than just like getting some powdered potassium, you know? Like I don't think that this is, this isn't the first line of action, this is just a backup. So this is my blend of uh, sodium and potassium and what I did is I got the salt sticks, which as I already said, have 215 milligrams of sodium and 63 of potassium. And I already had this potassium gluconate powder, which is a half a teaspoon is 270 milligrams. And so 270 plus the 63 in one of these capsules. Um, anyway, I did the math. But essentially, um, to get the potassium to be double the amount of sodium in these capsules, I basically did half a teaspoon of this, which is 270 milligrams, one of these capsules, which is 63, and so that makes 330, 333, plus one of these. This is um, potassium chelate, which is a different kind. I've heard gluconate is better. Um, this is 99 milligrams, and the only reason I'm using this instead of measuring out a little bit more of this is just because 99 milligrams is a nice unit. Uh, of measure, it's basically 100 milligrams, and so if I already have, um, what was it, 333, then this would make it 433. If I add in an additional 100, um, that would make it a ratio of 433 to 215 of sodium. So that's pretty much 2 to 1 ratio, which means I basically got 15 half teaspoons of this plus 15 capsules of just the straight up potassium plus 15 capsules of the salt sticks made this powder for me, which is just in this jar, which is the optimal ratio. And again, I have not tested this out or tried it, but I think even though this isn't an exact science, it's nice to have kind of an exact measurement here because if I ever feel a little bit of a little headachey and I try to kind of just in that state make it an approximation without really you know, measuring very clearly, it just um, is not going to be as beneficial as if I'm really getting the optimal ratio. So that is my, because I didn't see any electrolyte um, products online. Of course, I didn't really look all that hard, but that, that actually have the two to one potassium to sodium, because it seems like most of those electrolyte drinks are made for, um, uh, for athletes who need more sodium. So that's pretty easy to do. It was nice that I already had these things on hand, but if any of you guys feel like making your own electrolyte powder, this should be very easy to mix in with a, a drink. I don't know how um, much we actually need per day, you know, as far as like, oh yeah, that's an, another detail. Okay, so so the uh, one of these 
plus one of these plus a half a teaspoon of this makes equals one teaspoon of this mixture. So the um, the four hundred and six or what was it four thirty three potassium and the two fifteen of sodium milligrams of sodium would equal one teaspoon of this mixture. And I don't know what the total is that we're supposed to get per day. Um, but obviously we're going to be getting potassium and sodium in our diet throughout the day. Um, so, you know, it would be the case that if you ate something that had really a, a food that had a lot of sodium and not a lot of potassium, instead of supplementing with this, you would ideally just take a little bit of potassium to compensate. I'm not going to get that detailed into it. I know the Stanton protocol, she, you know, teaches people how to do that. I've never actually read her protocol. I've just read her ebook, which doesn't contain the protocol. And, um, so I think my point is that I'm just not going to salt food a lot that doesn't already have a lot of potassium in it. And when I do eat foods that have a lot of potassium in it, I'm going to make sure that I get salt to balance it out. And if I feel any kind of headache coming on, if I'm not able to juice, which is the best solution, um, I'm going to mix some of this in. I'm not going to rely on this powder for like my whole potassium sodium intake of the day, but I'll mix a little bit of this powder into some juice, and if I do have the time to juice, I will, um, if I'm doing a carrot juice with about five carrots, I will take two of these um, to get the optimal amount of sodium. Hope that was helpful. Thanks.